seemingly out of nowhere, we have a buzzing image format getting all the attention. Now, prior to this event, we ran two quick surveys asking developers what they were most curious about. And in both cases, AVIF was most mentioned. However, even more impressive has been the adoption. A bitstream that was frozen just about mid-2018 is now stable and or behind a flag two years later, accounting for 70% of browser market share. So what could have made AVIF such a favorite? Well, to discuss this ravishing raster format, we have a great guest, a longtime member of Image Intelligentsia, author of the compression tool Image Optim, and currently an engineer at Cloudflare, please welcome Cornell Lezyski. Enjoy. Stage is yours. Okay. Can you see my slides? I absolutely can. Fantastic. Whew. So we can go now. All right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to talk about AVIF uh, image format. Uh, it is a format that's been created as a side effect of AV1 video codec. Uh, so, uh, the story is, uh, the web needed a better video format that is, uh, free for everyone to use, um, and, uh, replacement for H.264, uh, and upgrade to the VP9 codecs that are used all over the web now. Uh, the format that we've got for this was proposed by MPEG was H.265. However, um, MPEG codecs are commercial codecs. They are not free to use. You actually have to buy them. Uh, it's enforced. You cannot even use open source free as in beer uh, implementation. Uh, you don't get that freedom because of patents. So uh, if you wanted high compression, high efficiency video, you would have to license it from MPEG. That used to work uh, years ago when you say bought a movie on a Blu-ray disc and the cost was included in the disc, in a, your hardware player, in your TV, but video has moved to the web. Uh, video has become ubiquitous, uh, become free. So YouTube cannot afford to play for pay for every free video they're streaming. Um, and it's problematic for free web browsers, like how Firefox is supposed to give free and open source browser that includes a commercial paid for codec that includes some in licensing terms uh, and per copy per device payments. So that situation in the age of the web became uh, impossible to continue. Uh, and a lot of companies got together uh, and decided that's it. We need a replacement that is free completely free to use, free from patents, uh, and competitive in terms of compression at the same time. So the AV1 format has been created uh, relatively quickly uh, and achieved its goal of competitive compression. In fact, the compression that has been achieved is the main point why the AVIF format derived from the codec is interested, interesting at all. Uh, Compared to other codecs, we've, we've had a JPEG replacements for, for ages, for the last two, 20 years, uh, which we've tried to replace JPEG and failed. Um, that because, that's because the JPEG replacements were a little bit better uh, or better in some cases, but worse in others. Um, so we couldn't just say, use this, it's always better. However, in terms of compression, the H.265 and AV1 are way ahead of the pack. Um, they're at the point when it's clear, yes, this is better, not just, oh, maybe better with right settings, maybe better on certain types of content. Um, they give you half the size of almost any other codec uh, that was usable on the web. Uh, you might have seen if you have an iOS device or someone with iOS device, you might have been sent by accident and uh, Hake uh, image format. Uh, so it happens that uh, AVIF and Hake uh, are almost the same thing. Uh, they're both Hake container format, 
which gives them all the features, all the metadata, uh, but uh, AVIF is just spec as do whatever HAVE does, but replace the uh, commercial H.265 pattern and convert codec and use the royalty-free AV1 codec instead. So um, about the AV1 codec that is inside the HAVE container, uh, it is derived from the VPX family of codecs as, a, as its foundation. So uh, AVIF is not only like a sibling to the uh, Hague popular on Apple devices, uh, it's also a cousin of WebP. So in, in the olden days where um, uh, Google bought the VPX codec and released VP8 uh, publicly, uh, there was an idea we're going to have this VP8 video format that's going to be free and everyone's going everyone's to use it, which sounds exactly like what we're saying with AV1 right now. But you know, there was the enthusiasm. We finally can get rid of paid for MPEG codecs and we'll have VP8 codec free for everyone. So if everyone's going to be playing VP8 video, why not take a single frame of VP8 video and call it an image format? And then you get two for the price of one. Uh, that how WebP was created. Unfortunately, um, WebP was a little bit too early. Uh, VP, VPX codecs really caught on with VP9, and VP9 is what currently is used by YouTube, by Netflix, and uh, VP9 was what really caught on. So, you know, on the second try, but WebP was stuck with this first try. Um, then uh, Google, kept experimenting on the VP10 codec, uh, on the VPX codec, and there was a VP10 version that was never finalized and never fully released. Instead, uh, the parallel experiments and developments on Mozilla uh, and XIF DALA codec and Cisco Tor were merged into VP10 codec, and the result has been called AV1. So AV1 is a quickly put together combination of the VPX family and uh, contributions from other companies, other experiments. Uh, interesting quirk is uh, the older generation was uh, used in flash video and that was like the start of the early video on the web when you had YouTube as a little flash player. So they're all related, that's the same family of codecs, just multiple generations ahead. I think that's, that's really cool. So um, in terms of how uh, AVIF looks like, you might wonder. Uh, so if you compress something with a JPEG, it has this characteristic blocky look with ringing artifacts. Um, and uh, you know, if you've worked with images, you can immediately recognize, yes, this has been compressed with JPEG. Um, and that typical JPEG look has been uh, sort of an aim baseline that later codecs tried to fix. So JPEG has got the uh, image transform correct. The idea you divide uh, image into blocks, you transform each block into frequency domain, uh, and then you can remove frequencies, which removes less of human perceptible detail uh, and more of information and gives you the, this good uh, compression. So later codecs uh, took this idea and just extended it to have multiple block sizes, uh, to have, uh, more, most importantly, to have smoothing. So this problem of JPEGs uh, ringing artifacts was solved by let's just blur it away. Uh, so uh, VP8, WebP, uh, and most other codecs have this um, uh, blurring uh, feature inside their uh, encoder, inside the decoder um, that hides all the blockiness and all the ringing artifacts. It, it doesn't prevent them from happening. They happen and then they're uh, washed away. Um, since AV1 is continuation of this idea, it just adds more. Uh, it, instead of blurring, it has the new, um, new feature that was added from the DALA codec which is uh, called in painting. 
instead of uh, applying just um, blur in our all directions in a block, uh, it looks for the um, primary direction of features inside a block and applies um, something like a motion blur in the primary direction. That happens to remove the ringing artifacts very, very uh, effectively, uh, preserve straight lines, uh, and does not introduce ugly blurring. It's still, it's still a form of blurring. Uh, and of course, it's at higher qualities. Uh, you don't actually see this literally. It's covered up by uh, uh, added detail on top of that. But you know, that's, the, that's the fundamental difference uh, in perceptible artifacts in AV1 uh, and AVIF. However, because it has so many different ways, like different block sizes, different transforms, different uh, types of blocks, some of them can be lossy, lossless, uh, so many features have been thrown in into that codec that it doesn't actually have the, any very characteristic look when you over compress image. It just loses some details, some things become blurry, some things become wobbly, but uh, it's not like JPEG anymore where you can clearly see something has been overly compressed. Uh, in fact, it has rather subtle loss of uh, some details. Uh, there are more interesting um, novel solutions in uh, AV1 and AVIF. Uh, another one is Chroma from Luma. So almost all image and video codecs uh, divide image into separate brightness and color channels. That matches uh, human pers what, what, how human perception works like. Our eyes are much more sensitive to differences in brightness in the picture rather than differences in color hue. Uh, so if you encode those channels as separate brightness as separate color, you can afford to compress uh, color much more. Uh, in fact, WebP and uh, other formats store uh, color at half of the resolution and only brightness at the full resolution. Uh, however, uh, all the older formats stored Luma and Chroma channels as basically three separate images, uh, complete encoding them completely separately with no relationship between each other. But you know, if you look closely, uh, these images are correlated, uh, especially where there are edges in the image. When there are edges in the brightness, it happens that there are edges in the color channels. So for, for AV1, uh, Actually, it was developed for the Mozilla DALA codec. The idea was, because these channels are similar, let's just encode the difference, the relationship between those two channels, and use the brightness as a guess for where the edges are in the color channels. And if you guess correctly, then you use fewer bits to encode that information, uh, and you get better compression. So that created uh, a strength and a weakness uh, in AV1. The strength is, you get really sharp edges around colored, colored areas, and you don't get the, any ringing artifacts, uh, any, uh, any things that looks like aberratic, uh, chromatic aberration, uh, you don't get color bleed. So this fixes one of the biggest uh, unfixable flaws with lossy WebP, where the chroma subsampling just forces you to have a, this trade-off where you have color at lower resolution and you have either some sort of bleed and uh, dirty edges around saturated colors, or color looks even visibly pixelated. Um, in JPEG, you can you have choice between the smudged and pixelated color or storing color at full res resolution called uh, 444. Uh, but in JPEG, that costs you extra because you're storing color at higher resolution, so that's more pixels, more data to encode. Uh, in AV1, you, get, you can use color at full, resol full resolution and it's super cheap because it's just derived from full resolution brightness channel. Uh, the downside of this is uh, if you happen to have a change in color that does not have corresponding change in brightness, then uh, there's no crutch for uh, AV1 uh, to help itself with encoding of that. 
So that color detail actually might, might get smudged uh, more or lost. Uh, so this is, this is a detail that I noticed encoders don't do well yet. It can be um, improved in a, at encoding time if software pays attention to this. Uh, but currently, uh, if some subtle difference in color disappears, that's, that's overly compressed uh, in uh, AV1 and it will not be noticeable on the image overall uh, because you know, the edge, edges elsewhere will match up. So um, AV, AV1 and AVIF are full of features. That's the maximal approach to uh, format. It's like whatever everyone wanted, it's there. Uh, it inherited most of the feature from the ISO HAVE spec which is like a pyramid of other ISO specs that have their own features. So it's, it starts from an MPEG video, ISO media base format, multi image format and HAVE and whatever. And it just keeps adding and adding. Uh, John mentioned uh, that uh, the HAVE container is a bit bloated uh, and verbose, it, it is true. Um, it's uh, even 300 bytes just to say, this is AVIF image and it has alpha channel. Uh, so it, it gets ridiculous. It probably didn't seem that much for um, MPEG specs, which deal with uh, hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes of video, or um, the HAVE spec was more for digital cameras. So your digital camera is gonna save images uh, at 40 megapixels. So extra 300 bytes didn't seem that much. But you know, if you have an, on the, use it on the web with something like an avatar that is one kilobyte in size and you add 300 bytes just to say it's an image, that, that becomes a bit ridiculous. But you know, and on the other hand, it has inherited a plenty of features. Um, it's gonna be a future looking format. The important is support for HDR. So all the next generation TVs uh, and monitors are getting proper HDR. Um, a current, current generation of monitors that claims to have HDR, like HDR 400, doesn't. So if you might, if you've tried to look at HDR content and thought, oh, what's the, what's the deal with it? It doesn't look that good. Uh, it's because the real HDR displays aren't quite here yet. The, only the, uh, the top of the line displays so far uh, display HDR content with a visible, uh, good looking effect. But you know, it's gonna get uh, cheaper, more common, it's gonna become a standard. And then we will need a, a format that really displays the uh, images at full brightness, the full spectrum that the display supports. And all our JPEGs and PNGs and GIFs are gonna look washed out compared to what we can get from next generation future uh, displays. So I think uh, we will have motivation to adopt a newer image format just because old formats cannot do it. Uh, we could live with old formats if they're just a bit wasteful. We can, we can wait out uh, wasted bandwidth um, and it's even easier to stay on the old formats because they work everywhere. But um, work in sense of display in, in, in their basic content. But if you, can, if you want to display a quality image and your format just doesn't, cannot represent that image, then well, you're forced to upgrade your image format. So that's the, that's the motivation. Um, there are a bunch of features that are for digital cameras that are inherited from HAVE. And I'm not sure if, um, browsers or even common implementations of AVIF are going to properly support them. Uh, it might happen, the, the same thing that happened to the old 90s JPEG, that there were multiple specs with multiple features. Uh, did you know that JPEG, for example, had a hierarchical coding that allowed storing multiple resolutions of the same image? And instead of having the progressive based on the blockiness level, it could progressively decode from uh, doubling image, image size and adding more details. Basically, very similar to JPEG 2000. There was a spec for the old JPEG, but it never caught on. It wasn't implemented. 
or there was uh, arithmetic coding for the old JPEG. It, it's theoretically there, it works. Uh, but because of the patents, nobody used it. So all the practical implementations and the features that are enabled in browsers, the, the commonly supported subset only shrunk to the, the bare minimum of, of the spec. So I expect we'll see the same thing with AVIF that uh, all this huge spectrum of the possibilities that exist in AVIF are just not gonna get implemented everywhere. So people will focus on only this, the necessary subset uh, and implementations will focus on what people use and AVIF is gonna shrink in its, its feature set. Um, one feature that I would like to see die in AVIF uh, as soon as possible is animations. Um, there's just no point having this weird separation between animation formats and video formats. Uh, in the older formats, the, the idea was, well, maybe the animation format is cheaper to the code. Maybe it's better for uh, lossless content or you know, small emo emoticons, emoji or whatever. Uh, but uh, in AVIF, the animation format is the AV1 video codec. So it's, it's an absurd situation of having a video format, then calling it an image format that animates just like the video format. Like, let, let's just go back and use AV1 videos properly. Uh, Safari has got it right. They support video uh, H.264, unfortunately, but they support proper normal video codec embedded in the image tag. There's, there's no re technical reason to call it a, a separate thing and maintain a uh, completely artificial difference between what is animation format and what is video format. Uh, that difference came from how the browsers evolved. In early days of Netscape, we just had GIF built into the browser and other formats didn't weren't built into the browser, required a plugin. Um, and the plugins were, uh, you know, you had to install them. Uh, some plugins were really ugly, horrible and slow. So people thought, oh, the proper video formats are horrible and slow and don't work and it's some, some big uh, thing. And animations format just work and they're lightweight and so on. But in fact, these days it's completely the opposite. Uh, the animation GIF format is very expensive to decode. It's single threaded. Uh, it doesn't get any hardware acceleration. Uh, doesn't work on GPU. While proper video format if they're built into the browser, can be decoded uh, just as easily, just ev as everywhere, um, and can work better with modern hardware. Speaking of modern hardware, um, like most modern video formats, uh, AV1 supports tiled encoding. So your single image can actually be encoded as multiple smaller fragments of the image tiles. Uh, and each fragment is independent enough that a separate CPU core uh, can handle the coding of that image entirely. So uh, you can divide, when encoding an image, you can divide it into multiple tiles, use multi-core CPU to encode it, and the same with decoding. Uh, AV1 is a quite expensive format to encode. It's tolerable enough to decode, uh, you know, you can play full HD uh, AV1 video on a low end 30 to bit ARM device. So, you know, for images that should be good enough. And with that extra help of multi-core decoding, uh, I think it's gonna be good, uh, good enough and uh, rather future proof because the CPUs are gonna get more and more CPU cores. Uh, interesting twist in um, AV1 is it supports mix of lossy and lossless um, encoding. So in the old days, we just had completely separate format. You, you want lossless, you're gonna have to use PNG. You want lossy, you're gonna use JPEG. And um, if you have content that contains uh, both texts and uh, computer generated graphics and a photo, then there wasn't a good format for this. Uh, WebP also got stuck with that uh, approach. It started as completely lossy codec and then added completely lossless mode, but no way to mix the two. So um, even though WebP is 
uh, pretends to be a single format uh, that can do both, it's actually two different formats put in the same file. And you, have, you still have to choose whether it's entirely lossless or entirely lossy. Uh, AV1, on the other hand, has uh, what it calls palette blocks. So you can divide the image into uh, tiny small blocks and choose on per block basis whether you're encoding it using the photo optimized uh, blurry smoothing, smoothing lossy uh, features or whether you encode them as just a bunch of palette pixels with uh, perfect sharpness. Um, in fact, with all the features uh, for encoding that AV1 has, even if you don't use this dedicated palette mode, it still does pretty well. Um, so finally, um, we, we're, we can have just one format that works for any kind of content and we don't have to educate users, oh, you should use this format with this setting or that format with that setting, depending on, and then try to describe how the DCT transform would be understood by a person who's not technical and uh, would not understand when to use uh, which. Um, AV1, uh, AVIF supports alpha channel as just another uh, AV1 image added as an attachment uh, in the file. So the alpha channel can be lossy itself. Um, this traditionally hasn't been done because the problem is um, if your alpha channel is lossy and uncovers some of the transparent pixels, you're gonna get this dirty uh, effect of just uh, uncovering either black background or uh, some random content. Um, so it's been really difficult to do. And for example, WebP uh, opted for having just lossless uh, alpha channel. However, the, the problem is, um, if the alpha channel has complicated shape, uh, many drop shadows uh, and things like that, it takes so, much, so many bits to encode it uh, that it actually becomes the biggest part of the file. So some loss is very desirable uh, in the alpha channel and hopefully um, the good sharpness that uh, AVIF gets uh, is gonna help with that. And another feature which it theoretically has because, well, inheriting from the Hive, it has all the features, um, but it's not implemented yet, is a possibility to have so-called pre-multiplied alpha color space. So instead of storing uh, color and alpha as completely separate independent uh, images, uh, as the name uh, implies, you multiply a color channel by the alpha channel uh, and that has mathematical effects that when you, after decoding, undo this process and divide the color by alpha channel, uh, if they don't match exactly, it gives you a more natural, uh, better looking color that preserves its hue, uh, even if alpha changed. Uh, if you didn't use the pre-multiplied alpha, your colors might darken or brighten um, and the, the semi-transparencies semi of, of changed alpha just don't look that good. Uh, so yeah, pre-multiplied alpha is another feature that I'm looking forward to having in uh, AVIF. Uh, well, AVIF has so many features, but there's uh, one it doesn't have. It doesn't have progressive encoding. Uh, and I shamelessly stole uh, animation from Jake Archibald, sorry. Um, but it, it's really, really good uh, demonstration of the advantage of progressive rendering um, and also advantage of AVIF compression. So uh, let's go. You see, JPEG can start showing something on screen very, very soon. Uh, oh, and then AVIF can load the full image in uh, almost half of the time of WebP. So, well, JPEG here is still loading. So there we go. So the JPEG has the largest file, but because it has progressive rendering, it can look loaded very early. Uh, so AVIF is not terrible only because it just compresses so well. So I would say JPEG can display something good enough in half of the size 
and AVIF can display everything in half of the size. So they're like, they're comparable. Um, the only uh, loser here is WebP, which does not have progressive rendering uh, and is behind in compression. So um, that's how it looks like. Let's see, let's see a replay. Hopefully, um, even this situation with AVIF uh, can be improved. Uh, there is a talk of uh, using either thumbnail feature or something more exotic that exits in Have because why not? Uh, and implement this as a sort of a wasteful progressive rendering. So, it's, so you're just going to create a regular AVIF image and then at the beginning of the file embed a regular AVIF image but compressed more or smaller uh, and then teach the browsers to display that thumbnail while the rest is loading. Uh, it is wasteful. It is not elegant, I would say, uh, from codec design perspective. Um, in JPEG, it's very neat because the progressive just reuses the same data it would have anyway, but just the data is sent in a different order. Uh, in AVIF, that would be extra overhead to the image. Um, but even if you add two or 5% overhead to AVIF, it's still gonna be way ahead of all the other image formats in terms of compression and have some, some format, some way of progressively displaying. And now um, wrapping up the talks usually uh, comes with bad news about uh, browser support. This time it's not a bad news. Uh, Chrome on desktop has already released support for AVIF. So you can use it today. Uh, you can start making your AVIF images, you can start embedding them on the pages and they will work. Mozilla is working on support in Firefox. Um, it's behind a flag and it's sort of early stages. It doesn't support alpha channel at all, for example. So uh, Firefox has still a way to go with their support, but you know, Mozilla is sold on the idea is on the board. Uh, uh, Edge is on board and presumably all other Chromium browsers will just inherit Chrome's implementation and, uh, you know, on the next refresh cycle, we're we'll, we'll gonna have a pretty good uh, AVIS support, at least on the desktop. Um, in terms of support, another really good signal is there are actually many completely independent uh, implementations of AV1 and AVIF. Uh, so uh, there's reference encoder. Um, and I think that there's a funny case that reference encoder started by being so, so slow that everyone else just decided to rewrite it from scratch and create their own encoder. So there's Intel uh, encoder, there's fast Rust based RAV encoder, there's uh, libgav and David decoder. This uh, level of support in a codec that is so early in its life cycle is very good. Um, I don't think um, VP8 or VP9 ever got to that level of support. Uh, and you know these codecs are 10 years old. Um, and on the AVIF side, we have libavif, which is used in, uh, in Chrome. There's, because it's HAVE, it can use the general purpose libhave for it. Uh, and I've created my own encoder in Rust uh, just based on the ISO specs. Um, so this is implementable. Um, and there's a proof, like there, there exist multiple independent in implementations of the codec. Also, there, there are hardware decoders shipped with the latest NVIDIA GPUs. Um, also AMD announced that their next generation of GPU is gonna have hardware decoding for AV1 and Intel has released uh, hardware decoding for AV1 uh, in their uh, latest embedded uh, GPU. So there's a lot of industry support uh, behind uh, AV1 as a format in general, and AVIF just happens to ride the wave. Now, as uh, been mentioned in previous talks, actual hardware decoding uh, in those GPUs may not actually be used for AVIF images because um, decoding of proper video is just more involved uh, and has different uh, constraints that uh, displaying a bunch of images on, on the page. But uh, you know, in terms of how, how much industry is behind AV1, 
that's that's quite notable. Uh, and also more and more sites are looking into start switching to AV1 video. Um, AV1 in a video format has even better browser support. Uh, well, AVF is kind of half done. Uh, AV1 has already shipped in Firefox, Chrome, and uh, everyone by everyone else. So uh, there, there is a growing industry adoption. If you want to start send, uh, sending AVF images uh, today, uh, then the easy way is to use the picture element using source type. Uh, browsers that fully properly implement AVF uh, detect that and react to this properly. Uh, you can, of course, use uh, HTTP negotiation as well. Uh, I've created a pure Rust encoder based on Ravi encoder. Um, so that's a, just a simple command line tool. You give it a JPEG or PNG and it spits out AVIF. Um, you know, try it out. Let, let me know what tools do you need to actually adopt uh, and start using AVIF. So, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to write more tooling and add, add support to whatever software uh, is needed. And it happens that I work for Cloudflare. So of course, um, I've added support for AVIF encoding to uh, Cloudflare image resizing service. So that's another thing. If you don't want to install anything on your server or um, anything like that, you can just pipe your old school images through uh, Cloudflare and have them, have them converted automatically. Yeah. So that's it from me. Uh, and I think we can have a Q and A now.